All right, fellas, this is it. This is the plan. It went horrible for me last year. It cannot happen again. So if it happens this year, and I get to the end, and the same thing happened, wrong name, I gotta get out of here. I can't take it. So this is an escape plan. Okay, here's the deal. Something happens at the end, and I get this name wrong. I step to the right, I drop down in the trap door. You immediately send out my double. Find somebody here in the Philippines that look like me remotely. Get him out on the stage. I'm going to go up to the roof. I'm going to zip line. Look, I measured it out. I, it can go. I can make it. I zip line over to the other building. I go down the steps. I get down to the bottom. There'll be a bakery truck. That's what this represents right here. It's a bakery truck waiting on me. This is my ticket out of here. I get in the bakery truck. I'm at the airport. I'm on the jet. I'm in the States. So is there any room for us? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't nobody know you. Get boys to men out there. Let them start singing and distract everybody. Put your head up, fellas. Man up. Let's go. You'll be all right. Really. One person. One person. One person. One person. One voice. One voice. One voice. One voice. Can change the entire world. 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 Dream of possibilities. Reach beyond our grasp. Embrace innovation. Educate all children. Respect our planet. A single person, one voice, can inspire hundreds, thousands, millions of people. The lead by example. Inspire compassion. Equal rights. Fight racism. Fight intolerance. Unite. Don't divide. You can move a nation. Impact the entire planet. You just need to be heard. I want to be a role model for young women. I want to make a difference. That's why I want to be Miss Universe. 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 From the beautiful Philippines, land of over 7,000 islands, surrounded by the glittering South Pacific, it's the 65th Miss Universe with your host, Steve Harvey. With supermodel and body activist, Ashley Graham. Live performances by Flo Rida and Boys to Men, plus the reigning Miss Universe, Pia Wurtzbach. Now, live from the Mall of Asia Arena in Manila, here are your Miss Universe contestants, accompanied by four time Grammy nominee, Flo Rida.
the flow. Hey, next thing you know, Shelly got low. Low, 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 low. Hey, the baggy sweat, pay it to the reef. I'm this rap with this jam. She kind of around me, got that big booty up. Hey, she hit the flow. She hit the flow. China. Shelly got low. Low. Colombia. Low. Costa Rica. Croatia. Curacao. Czech Republic. Denmark. Dominican Republic. Ecuador. Finland. France. Georgia. Germany. Great Britain, Guam, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Oh, 
universe. All right, let's get it out the way. I know what you're thinking. Is that the guy from last year? Did they bring back that guy from last year? Well, they did. It's me. I'm back. Uh, been a long year getting here, too, because, uh, boy, I paid the price for last year. But one thing I learned in life, when you make a mistake, you just got to keep on moving forward, man. That's all. You just got to get up and go again. Well, speaking of keeping it moving forward, everybody listen, tonight we've got 86 new contestants. We're coming to you from a new host country. Also... Since the last event, I went and had a little surgery, had some stuff done to my eyes. So when we get to the end and the card comes up, we'll get it right this year. But tonight, it's really not about me. It's about 86 of the world's most empowering women. And what do I mean by empowering? One of these women is a microbiologist, one is an agro-business engineer, and another one is a former firefighter. They have traveled from all corners of the world to be here in the beautiful Philippines. And I gotta tell you, in front of one of the greatest audiences in Miss Universe history. And if that's not enough right there tonight, we're lucky to have one of the world's most ins inspiring and respected supermodels, Ashley Graham. She's gonna be giving us a peek behind the scenes with our contestants. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you, Steve. I'm so excited to be here. And I'm not only gonna be talking to the contestants, but you'll also be getting an inside story on what it's like to be in the thick of the competition behind the ropes of Miss Universe. It's definitely more than just glamour and a crown to, be, to have the job of Miss Universe. It's about leading and promoting life-changing initiatives to create global change. And tonight, we are looking for one exceptional woman who can rise to the top and take on that responsibility. And Steve, it is a tall order. Well, once tonight's winner's crown, her life will change in an instant. And nobody knows that better than your current Miss Universe, Pia Wurzbach. <laughs> Pia is the pride of the Philippines and embodies everything that the crown stands for. Let's take a look at her incredible journey as Miss Universe. Miss Universe is Colombia. I have to apologize. The first runner up is Colombia. Miss Universe is Philippine. I won. I'm Miss Universe. Being Miss Universe, it's not over when you're crowned. That's when the work actually starts. Okay, let's get some more. Please welcome Miss Universe, Pia Wurzbach. You got the crown. As Miss Universe, it's your job to inspire the people. I love my job. <laughs> Back in 2013, there was a typhoon that hit the Philippines. So we're going to visit areas where Ford A is re-empowering the people, rebuilding their lives, basically. 
What is this right here? A force field. You guys thought of the same idea. Today is National HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. I had a really fruitful year. I'm very grateful for everything. Even after Miss Universe, I'll always stand tall in representing the Philippines. And not just the Philippines, but the rest of the universe. <laughs> Okay, I didn't ask them to replay last year. That was not my idea. Who the hell thought that was a good idea? But here we go. But I gotta tell you something. Pia is really one remarkable woman. Please welcome the reigning Miss Universe, Pia Wurtzbach. Wow. Pia? <laughs> this is your home country. This is a great moment. It's great to see you again. Uh, the last time we were on this stage together, uh, you were first runner-up for about 28 seconds. <laughs> that, that, was a crazy, that was a crazy night. I got to ask you, what, what's your year been like since then? Wow, it really exceeded um, my expectations. It was a remar remarkable year, and I re I've really grown as a woman. I've learned so many things, and this actually opened a lot of doors for me. Actually, I just signed with IMG, so I'm very excited about that. And I do hope that uh, everyone keeps supporting me even after I pass on the crown. <laughs> Steve, I never got to thank you, but thank you for making me the most popular Miss Universe. And, uh, no, it's okay. And I want to thank you for making me the most famous host of Miss Universe. <laughs> <Since we're laughs> What, it, what has been for you probably one of the most gratifying things about serving as Miss Universe? I think it's a, really about time that we put the Philippines back on uh, the world stage. We have so much talent and we're just really waiting to be recognized and having the Miss Universe competition here, I think it's about time because we have so much beauty and so much to offer and Welcome, welcome everybody to the Philippines. Yes. Thank you, Pia. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Just... Well, tonight represents the final challenge in a week-long competition. The moment that these women arrived in Manila, the hard work began, and they've been pushing themselves to the limit ever since. Let's take a look. Because I got here, it's been crazy. Yes! I've been doing registrations, fittings, meeting new people, photo shoots. I've been just running around. So exciting. Who's going to win? Yeah, all right. We'll see. It's been a dream for years to be at Miss Universe. I um, tried five years ago and didn't actually make it, but now I'm here. If you do not know yourself, this is going to be a difficult job. It's the moment I get to share my message. So for me, this is what Miss Universe is all about. The job of Miss Universe is to tell young girls, you are good enough. You are special. You are proud to be you. I'm 25 years old. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. I want to be the first woman president of my country. You do you, girl. Nice. 
And when you think about it, you get this anxiety like, oh my God, there's gonna be so many people. What if I trip or what if this happens? You don't know who will win this. So don't give up. It is a competition. So of course, every girl here wants to win and they're gonna do their best, but you know, there can only be one winner. Now the competition begins. Well, coming up, we have the swimsuit and evening gown competition. A special performance by Boys to Men. And when we come back, brace yourselves. The first elimination of the night. Will your favorites make the cut to the lucky 13? Find out when Miss Universe returns live on Fox. Miss Universe, sponsored by Dove Chocolate. Choose pleasure. So I have a question. There's a double standard with women staying at home. Would you guys date a guy who wants to be a stay-at-home? Never. 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 Let's hear why. You first, because you asked. I would be okay with it. If, yeah, if yeah, I me would too. Okay me too. With dating me a man too. that wants to yeah. stay at home and, and do take what? Care and do nothing. <laughs> oh this is God. such a double standard. I want standard. a man. I want a man. We're sitting here saying a man is supposed to go to work. If we put the shoe on the other foot, isn't that what they're telling to us? You're a woman, so you should be staying at home. And we're telling men that you should be going, going to work. work. Is that no, not yeah. the same thing? It's the same want, thing. Same same thing. thing. I think we both have to do both things, yes, working yes. and be at home helping. Yes, you know, my dad yes. washed the dishes too, and he works a lot. But to stay at home and not do anything, mm-mm, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to Miss Universe. Now, being Miss Universe is a demanding job, and it requires confidence, tenacity, plus the passion to motivate change around the world. And this week, the contestants discovered that they were in for one intense competition. When they faced the preliminary interviews, the pressure was on. My heart beats like this. It feels like my heart is in my mouth. Going in, you must be nervous because your thought process is overwhelmed with so many things you think they might ask. Be comfortable, no going on the top. You must speak loud, loud. It's nerve wracking, but with these interviews, it makes it more personal and they calm down and you get to see a little more reality of their personality and that's what we want to find out. What's your definition of beauty? What is your greatest accomplishment? And you are studying industrial design. What do you think people should know about your country? What differentiates you from all the other contestants? That, um, um, because I think that we... Going. You can finish. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much. When you're Miss Universe, it's very stressful. There's a lot of headwinds. You need to be resilient. You need to be flexible. We're looking for someone who has real substance. I learned that life is happening right now, and I feel if I want to be living my dreams, I should be doing it now. You can impact people in a way that leaves them feeling good about themselves. That's more important than what you look like. I not only have a master's degree in computer information systems, I'm also in the United States military, meaning that not only can I fix the software on each of your computers, I can also kick the butt of a 250-pound man if he tries to take your computer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's done. Well, 
Folks, I'm about to announce our top 13 finalists. After a week of preliminary competition here in the Philippines, 12 of them were selected by members of the Miss Universe organization and our preliminary judges. But the 13th contestant was selected by you, voting online this week at home. And how many votes were cast? Are you ready for this number? 100 million. 100 million in just five days of voting. You know how many votes I got to host this show again? More than that. <laughs> so get ready. Here are your top 13. Kenya. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much, Steve. You know, I, I cannot believe your story. You lost your parents at an early age. You had a near-death experience at five. You become the first contestant from your country to ever become a Miss Universe contestant. How in the world? <laughs> The first one to reach the final 13. How in the world did you get here? Well, Steve, I have a very strong and loving, supportive family. My siblings and I are lucky to have been... Thank you. My siblings and I are, are lucky to have been left in the hands of our stepmother, who's been our mentor, and always encouraged us to chase our dreams without giving up, that we should always pursue that we should always pursue that which we love. As long as you keep, as long as you keep yourself alive, keep, keep hope alive, you'll always make it. And death is always, it's like, an, uh, it gives meaning to life, to know that our days are numbered and our time is short. So I live my life, thank you. So I always live my life like it's the last moment, and this moment right here, I will live to remember. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenya. Also, moving forward is Indonesia. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. You know, uh, being a woman in your country at six feet tall, that's a foot taller than the average size woman from your country. What kind of, what's that been like for you? Yes, I feel I'm so blessed because I think this is gift from God. So, I can help to others. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Indonesia. Next to advance is... USA! Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Now, you are also in the military. You're in the uh, United States Army Reserves. What's it like for you to take off, the take off the fatigues, put on these gowns and outfits, and start campaigning as Miss Universe? Hopefully as Miss Universe, if I have the privilege enough to be crowned. But as Miss USA, I have had the opportunity to really just go around and show the world the diversity that we have as women. Uh, myself and the other 85, <laughs> thank you. 
Myself and the other 85 contestants are all so diverse. We, we represent so much coming from our countries and I'm just so incredibly excited, honored, and I'm, I feel humbled to know that I represent strong, powerful women, especially women that serve our country. Thank you. Thank you, USA. One step closer to the crown is... Mexico! Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Now, I once heard that you actually tripped and fell doing a pageant. What happened? Yes, it was three years ago in a catwalk. And obviously, I felt nervous. And I think that I take advantage of that opportunity because there were judges, there were media. And I say, this is my opportunity to say, to say I'm here, I'm Mexico, and well, I take advantage of that and I say, nothing happened. And that's what? <laughs> yeah. That's what I said after last year. Thank you, Mexico. Well, 82 contestants are still hoping to remain in the competition. After the break, five more exceptional women will step into the top 13. Will your favorites make the cut? Well, find out when Miss Universe returns live on Fox. We're live from Manila, the capital of the beautiful Philippine Islands. Here again, Steve Harvey. We are back with 86 extraordinary women who are putting it all on the line for the right to become the next Miss Universe. Four women have already advanced to the next round. And right now, we're going to reveal the next four. Here we go. The next woman to make it to the top 13 is... Peru! Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh my God, my heart is going to explode of happiness. Mine too, yes. Listen, uh, in October last year, you were involved in a very, very serious car accident, and it took them over two hours to pry you out of the car. T t tell us about that. Yes, I had a car accident last year, and it was very painful. Many doctors told me that I couldn't come to Miss Universe. But you know, Miss Universe was my biggest motivation, so I started to go twice a day to therapy to recover fast. And now I am here and I am more grateful than ever. And this is the best moment of my life so far. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Peru. Still in the running is Panama. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Uh, I understand that you and your sisters uh, were raised by a, a, a single mother. How has that prepared you for competing in this competition here? Well, my mother told me and my sister, like, with effort and working hard, you can have everything you want and definitely give me the confidence and also the strength to pursue my dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Panama. One step closer to the crown is... Colombia!
Oh, God. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And don't worry. Hug me. Yes. I want you to marry my son. Yes. <laughs> Listen, um, I, I'm going to just ask this with myself. How, how do people in Colombia uh, feel about Steve Harvey? <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to y'all. You wanted it through? No, just just lie to me. Just lie. A lot of people hate you, but but me no, I love you. The most important is te perdono y en el nombre de mi país sabemos que errar es de humanos. Was that a death threat? Thank you, Colombia. The <laughs> little shook up right now. Uh, the eighth contestant moving forward is Philippines. <laughs> Oh God, I can't believe this is happening again. This is crazy. What the hell? Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Listen, uh, your aunt was actually uh, Miss Universe Philippines in 1990, I understand. Uh, did she give you any advice about competing? Of course, she just told me to be myself and to be more confident since it's going to be here in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Philippines. Eight women have earned a spot in the final 13. And in a moment, we'll reveal the last five contestants who still have a shot at the title. This is the 65th Miss Universe competition live from the Philippines on Fox. Coming up, Pia takes Ashley on a wild tour of the Philippines and later a live performance by Boys to Men when Miss Universe returns. Moving on to the next round is... Make a difference. Kenya, Indonesia. Lead by example. USA, Mexico. Biromo. Peru, Panama. Inspire millions of people. Colombia, Philippines. Be Miss Universe. Be Miss Universe. Welcome back to Miss Universe, everybody. Let's keep it going. 78 amazing women are still waiting for their names to be called, but only five coveted spots in the final 13 remain. Still in the competition, is Canada. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, uh, you recently ran your very first marathon. I don't, I don't believe in running that far. Oh, uh, what? Do you think being an athlete or being athletic 
gives you uh, some edge on some of the other contestants? Well, running a marathon, a long 42.2 kilometers or 26 miles, takes determination, perseverance, patience, and a lot of stamina. And all those seem like attributes that a Miss Universe needs to have, so. Thank you, Kanika. The number 10 spot goes to Brazil. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You are the first black woman from Brazil to represent the country in over 30 years. What does that mean to you? I am proud to... I am very proud and an example to other girls like me. Thank you, Brazil. Also, headed to the finals is... France! Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Steve. Thank you. We understand that you love to cook French food. What, what's your specialty? Yes, I love cooking. My specialty is boeuf bourguignon. This is a beef a slowly cooked uh, with red wine. You should try. This is very good. This is amazing, really. I want to. Yes. I will invite you in Paris. No, I'm, I have a wife. I can't come. No, but my buff bourguignon is the best. Well, my wife still ain't gonna let me come, so thank you. Thank you, France. <laughs> Two spots left. One of them goes to... Haiti! Congratulations. Thank you so much. So, I understand that you're part of a research team that's working for a cure for blindness. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, I'm part of a research project that consists of finding new alternatives to cure blindness, such as surgery. And that project has taught me to not take my eyes for granted and if it's because of your eyes that you're watching this incredible show tonight. <laughs> and it's because of your eyes that you'll be able to read who's the next Miss Universe. Hey, 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 hey. Enough of the eye jokes. Starting to hurt me a little bit. Thank you, Haiti. <laughs> and the final spot, chosen from over 100 million votes, from the fans at home. Million votes from the fans at home. Thailand! Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. I, uh, I understand that uh, you bought 17, 17 suitcases with you to the Philippines. What's, what's in all the suitcases? <laughs> That's a good question. They are full of clothes and accessories from the lovely sponsor in Thailand. Thank you. Well, thank you, Thailand. Well, there you have it.
your final 13. Next up, the swimsuit round, and everyone watching at home will have a chance to vote for their favorite contestant. Right now, let's check in with Ashley backstage, who's going to be talking with one of our final 13. That's right, Steve. They are coming off the stage as we speak, and they are ecstatic. And I'm so happy to see that some of my favorite contestants made it to the top 13. It's an incredible group of women. It's so diverse this year. You're seeing so many different women of color, hair textures. Um, there's also so many different women from all walks of life. Okay, Canada's here. How does it feel to be in the top 13? So proud, I'm so excited, and I'm proud to represent the women of the world. I'm so proud and happy for you as well. Okay, so earlier this year, you were a victim of body shaming, and it's definitely something that I can relate to. Tell me, what do you say to the haters? To the haters, I say we are confident with who we are because we are women and we that's what we want to be. We are women who are confident with ourselves, we love ourselves, and that's what's important. I love that. That's such a great message out there. So every girl at home is probably wondering, what do you do when you look in the mirror? Like, what do you have words of affirmation? How do you get yourself psyched up? Because not everybody's as comfortable in their skin as maybe the two of us are. Right. Focus on what you love about yourself, because in our society, we are told to look at the things we want to change. But if we look at the things that we love, that's what's important, and that keeps us confident. I love that. Congratulations, Canada. Now go get in your swimsuit. I can't wait to see them in their swimsuits. Back to you, Steve. Well, thank you, Ashley. You know, in a way, folks, uh, Miss Universe is a job interview uh, for one of the most prestigious jobs in the world. The opportunities are incredible, so the expectations are really high. That's why our judges are a true panel of experts in all of the aspects of Miss Universe, like former Miss Universe and UNICEF Ambassador, Dianara Torres. Another former Miss Universe and UN Ambassador, Leila Lopez. Fashion guru and editorial director for the paper magazine, Mickey Boardman. Actress and CEO of the Bailey Agency, my girl, Cynthia Bailey. Bollywood superstar, former Miss Universe and champion of women's rights, Sosmita Sin. Social entrepreneur and women's empowerment activist, Francine Lefranc. Now, Francine, you've judged the preliminaries this week. Which contestant really impressed you the most coming into tonight? Steve, you know, I took this process really seriously, and I put these women through hell. And I have to tell you, they came through with flying colors. But imagine, we have a lawyer on stage, we have a, a denti dentist, we have a woman in the military, we have a biologist. These women are fabulous. I have a really hard job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Now, let me go over here. Uh, Dianara, you were also at the prelims. Who stepped up in your minds and really surprised you earning a spot in the 13th? Well, Mr. Harvey, um, this is actually my third time being a judge, and you would think that I would be a pro and it gets easier, but it really, it's so hard. Um, we're able to talk to them, to really know them more personally, and um, they're amazing women. I am so, uh, my, our job, all, all of our jobs are so hard this year, uh, so confident. Uh, they walk with the presence and they can all do a great, great job. And I'm happy with what I see. I wish I can have even more than 13 because I was a judge that had more than 30 and had to narrow it down to a 10. So it's been hard, but um, I'm sure it's gonna, we're going to find uh, the perfect girl for the job. Thank you. Well, we've met our six in-house judges, but tonight's seventh judge is probably the toughest to impress. And I'm talking about all of you fans watching at home. You know, when it comes to Miss Universe, your opinion counts. And here's how you can vote for your favorite contestants. To vote, download Vody or the Miss You app for iOS or Android and click on the vote button. For each round of the competition, you will have 10 votes to distribute amongst the contestants. 
Use your votes wisely and don't forget to lock in your votes. This is real-time scoring and the voting windows are short, so make sure you are ready. Alternatively, you can cast votes via vote.missuniverse.com and via Twitter using both hashtag Miss Universe and hashtag country name. Take advantage by retweeting. All right, the last time the Philippines hosted the Miss Universe competition was back in 1994. But I've never been here, so when I wanted to do a little exploring, I went straight to the expert, the current Miss Universe, Pia Wurzbach. Hey guys, I just got to the Philippines and my tour guide is on that plane. I can't wait to see her. your first time in the This is my first time in Asia. Really? Yes. Wow. Even though I've been living here all my life, it really takes time to go around because we have 7,107 islands. Are actually. you serious? Yes. The girls got to tour around the Philippines. Everywhere they go, it looks completely different from each other. And right now, we're in Bohol. We have these hills, we call them chocolate hills. When it starts to rain, they turn from green into brown. I was under the impression that we're gonna go see this little monkey. Yes, it's called the Tarshir. Tarshir. So they're very small and they got these big eyes. Okay. And they're very <laughs> clingy. Kind of like me when, you know, right. I'm holding on to the crown. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's right there. It's right there. Oh. That's what I look like What's in the up? morning. So like... <laughs> Maybe we should yes. name this one Pia. Thank this was you. incredible. Thank you for having me in the Philippines. Pia, it was so much fun having you as my tour guide. But I have to ask you, what are we going to do next time I come to the Philippines? Ashley, we are going to Boracay next time. I'm going to take you to the, one of the best beaches in the world. We're going to have some seafood. You like seafood? I love seafood. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to explore the, explore the, uh, sea, uh, so the water adventures we can have. We're going to have some nightlife as well. I'm going to take you around. I'm going to show you that it really is more fun in the Philippines. I can't wait, girl. Well, this year's contestants have also had a couple of weeks to get familiar with all the sights, sounds, and even the tastes of the Philippines. This is balut. It is a Filipino delicacy, and it's an embryo, and it's boiled in an egg. <laughs> it has a head! And... <laughs> when you open it, there is a soup inside. Soup. When we return, the top 13 hit the stage in the swimsuit competition. This is Miss Universe, live from the Philippines. Welcome back to the 65th Miss Universe. We are live from the Mall of Asia Arena in the Philippines. The night began with 86 incredible women from all over the globe. Now we're down to our final 13 who are about to go head to head in the swimsuit competition. And for this round, each of our contestants is wearing shoes from Chinese laundry and was given the opportunity to choose her own swimsuit from Yamamai that best fits her body type and personality. And as a woman who practically lives in her swimsuit, I can tell you it makes all the difference. Well, remember, voting is in real time. And this is your chance to push your favorite contestant to the top. And now, the swimsuit competition.
kicking off tonight's very first round of competition. The judges are ready. The fans are ready. It's the first three of your 13 finalists. Here is Kenya. The last time a woman wearing an animal print swimsuit won a decade ago. Indonesia. Indonesia chose the striped Yamamai swimsuit, a similar type to Pia Wurzburg from last year. USA. The last Miss Universe winner to wear a yellow competition suit was Leila Lopez. Mexico. The preliminary competition. Mexico. Mexico threw on an extra turn during the runway at the preliminary competition. Yes, there she goes again. Peru. While traveling, Peru follows an online workout program she can do in her hotel room. These women are the best of the best. Here comes three more finalists in the swimsuit competition. Panama. Panama goes to the gym twice a day and works out nearly 30 hours a week. Colombia. Colombia is a fan favorite who had a huge cheering section during the preliminary competition. Philippines. If Philippines wins tonight, it will be just the second back-to-back -back victory in Miss Universe history. Your final 13 continue to grace the stage. Please welcome the next two women vying to move forward. Here is Canada. In 1952, the first ever Miss Universe winner wore a pink swimsuit. Brazil says her signature is her smile and it makes her confidently beautiful. Brazil. And now, here are the final trio from your top 13. France. France seems at home on stage here in her Chinese laundry shoes. Haiti. Miss Universe walking coach Lou says in rehearsals that Haiti soaked up feedback like a sponge. And your 13th finalist, the fan favorite, Thailand. Thailand works out three hours every day, and girl, it shows. One more huge hand for our top 13. I hope you at home were voting along. You have an important job as our seventh judge, and we'll keep you updated on your picks as the night rolls on. There's no way I could possibly choose the top nine. They all look great out there. So let's get to an expert and check in with Ashley. Thanks, Steve. Some of us aren't very comfortable walking around in our swimsuits, um, but some of us are. And for those who aren't so comfortable, um, we have Miss Kenya here to talk to us about it. How did it feel to be up there in your swimsuit? I feel blessed. I feel amazing. And to be able to now be a confident woman and to represent what Miss Universe stands for, to be confidently beautiful, this is the best moment that I have had. Thank you so much for the support. Thank oh, you for everything. I'm you so are happy. You are so beautiful and confidently beautiful. Thank Back you to so you, much. Steve. Well, thanks, Ashley. 
Everybody, give Ashley a big hand. Fans, how about you give yourself a big hand? And if you're at home, even if you're by yourself, clap for yourself. Don't be embarrassed. Nobody's watching. Just clap. I have absolutely been blown away by the love and enthusiasm of the folks here in the Philippines and that love that they have for Miss Universe. You are some of the greatest fans in the world. Watch this. The Filipinos are on the world. Yeah. Yeah. They love Miss Universe. I swear, they love Miss Universe. They're all yeah. crazy about it. Coming up, we find out who moves on to the evening gown competition when we reveal our final nine. And later on, Grammy-winning artist Boys to Men serenade the contestants when Miss Universe returns live on Fox. I'm an athlete. Miss Universe, before we move on, let's talk to a couple of the judges. Cynthia, let, let me ask yourself, which one of the contestants has kind of got your fancy so far? Well, Steve, you know, of course, all of the ladies looked amazing. And in my opinion, this part of the competition requires the most confidence. So I will say the ladies that stood out the most to me in this competition was Haiti. <laughs> France and Canada. I just felt like <laughs> I just felt like they were really having a good time with it and they just really owned it. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Mickey, uh, let me ask you, you, you what, what's been the biggest surprise of you for the night? Um, one thing that's been such a surprise is every single woman is amazing. So there's, I think I have a favorite and then someone else comes out and speaks to you or comes out in the swimsuit competition and I suddenly have a new favorite and I'm very confused, but they're, they're all amazing. In the swimsuit competition, I particularly, they all looked amazing, but I loved the attitude of Canada, Brazil, France, and the Philippines. I thought they all, they, had, they all felt confident and unique and happy to be who they are, and I think that's a great message to send to women around the world. Well, thank you, Mickey. Boy, whew, this is, this is gonna be tough. Well, we'll soon find out who's still in the running to be the next Miss Universe. The results were tabulated by our official accounting firm, Ernst & Young, and I've got them right here. God. <laughs> Every time I read off a card, I just pucker up just a little bit, just <laughs> sip, just shucks it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> 
it's time to reveal our top nine. Heading into the final nine is USA. I'm a captain in the United States Army Reserve and I grew up in a military family. My mom and dad both served proudly, and they inspired me to do the same. When I was competing for Miss USA, my mom had just been placed on hospice. She was battling lung cancer. But when I won, she was so incredibly proud of me. District of Columbia! Three months later, my mom passed away and all the way up to her last moments, she was extremely strong, and I know that she will be with me when I compete, standing right next to me. USA. The next contestant moving on. Thailand. ก็ทํางานบ้านช่วยคุณแม่คุณแม่เวลาที่คุณแม่จะไปทํางานที่ไหนคุณแม่ก็จะพาหนูไปด้วยตลอดเลยเราก็มีความรู้สึกนิดน
very honored and proud to represent my lovely country, Kenya. We have 42 tribes in total. If I became Miss Universe, the message that I would give to all women in the world is to believe in themselves, that every shape, every height, every size is beautiful, that you should not be defined by what you wear, you should not be defined by who you date, you should not be defined by material wealth, but what should make you complete as a woman is to be confident in knowing that you can achieve anything, to know that there are no limitations, that you can work hard and you can be whoever you want to be. Kenya! One step closer is... Colombia! Me encanta compartir con la gente, me encanta poder bailar, me encanta estar con los niños, hacerlos reír, brincar. Y eso es bueno también por mi hiperactividad. Lo que más me apasiona en la vida es ese compartir con los niños. Ver su crecimiento y ver la oportunidad que se les está presentando con el beneficio que se les está aportando, educación. Creo que si todos recibimos educación podemos tener un futuro mejor. Colombia. Joining her in the top nine. Canada. I'm a law student at the University of Saskatchewan. I wanted to study law because I wanted to be an advocate for others. In 2009, my family and I lost our home to a house fire. We lost our possessions and we put a lot of focus on the things we have rather than those we have in our lives. I started volunteering with the Red Cross and thought, how could I make a difference on a greater scale? I entered Miss Teen Saskatchewan two weeks after losing our home. I went on to win Miss Teen Canada World. I traveled to Kenya, Africa to build a school for the children. And I learned then that pageants can be a platform to achieve your greatest dreams. Canada. Only two spots left. And one of them goes to A few years back, I saw my grandmothers go blind because of glaucoma. There's a lot of glaucoma running in the family. I might get it too when I get old. So I went to college and I got my degree in optometry. I'm currently working on a project on the regeneration of the optic nerve to find a cure for blindness. Haiti has suffered a lot through the past decade. I want the world to know that we Haitian women, we are strong and we are resilient. No matter what happens, we are always ready to get back on our two feet and accomplish our goals. Haiti, only one spot remains in the final nine, but you have to wait until we come back to find out who's moving on. I know it's a little mean, but trust me, it'll be worth the wait. This is Miss Universe live on Fox. Still to come, the evening gown competition, and later, a performance from boys to men. It's all live from the Philippines on Fox. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, well, I kind of left you all hanging. There's one more name, and I have it 
right here. I'm going to nail it. I'm going to nail it. Don't worry about it. This is a big confidence booster for me. This will get me ready for the big announcement later on. Let's go, Steve. You can do it. The last remaining contestant to make our final nine. Philippines! started this journey, I was just a simple girl. I didn't expect anything. I never had my own space because we all lived in my grandma's house and we don't have any house. So when I entered college, I chose interior design because I love creating space. Space affects how we heal, how we work, how we deal with our life. And now that I'm here, with the help from my fellow Filipinos, I'm confident I can be Miss Universe. Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, your final nine. One of these women will be your next Miss Universe, but first, the National Costume Competition is one of the most colorful events in Miss Universe and happens to be one of my personal favorites. Each contestant wears an elaborate costume that reflects the beauty and spirit of her home country. They got no guidelines, we got no rules, and let me be clear, they go all out. Take a look. Got it, got it. Got it. <laughs> for our winner, Men and Mar. Okay, this is really, really incredible. What, what, what inspired this? Yeah, my national costume represent, uh, um, represents the princess figures of traditional Burmese, military puppetry. Yeah, marionette puppetry. And uh, you are seeing it, it's too heavy, right? Yeah, it is too heavy. I'm scared. Can you give me a demonstration? Yeah. Um, yes, it's too heavy. And <laughs> I really want to put it down, but <laughs> yeah, it is um, approximately, it's weight, approximately 40 kilograms. Okay, well, let's see. Let's show us how it works. Thank you very much. 
folks, one more round of applause for our national costume winner, Ashley. What's happening? Amazing costume. And coming up next for the final nine, take the stage again, and you'll have a chance to vote for your favorites. But during the break, check out Facebook Live interviews with Boys to Men at facebook.com slash Miss Universe. This is Miss Universe live on Fox. place like home. If you are at home and you're watching with your mom, or if you're a mom yourself, you know what a huge positive impact that a strong parent can have. So let's take a special look at some of our contestants and their extraordinary mothers. Mommy! Mommy! Mommy, saluda. <laughs> My mother is a person whom I can go up and talk to about anything and everything. I always tell her all the things that I'm going through and she gives me the best advice. She cracks the funniest and the lamest jokes sometimes. My mom wants to learn how to swim, but as you can see, she's still not in the pool. I'm coming. Jamie Lee when she was a little girl. Let me see. Always makes me laugh that one. That's a cool hairstyle. I'm quite jealous of that. I wouldn't be able to do that now. One of the greatest things my mum has taught me is to always be myself. She taught me to be humble and never take any day for granted. That it's so important to make others happy because that's what's going to make you happy as well. That despite all the challenges that you go through in life, once you are strong and once you're determined, you can do anything. She showed me how to love people, how to be there for them all the time. She's everything to me, so I love her so much. I'm traveling to the Philippines with my mother in my heart. She is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I wouldn't want to trade any single moment or any memory that we've had, whether it was good or bad, for anything else. All right, everybody. So, what did we just learn from that? Everybody, get up off your butt and go call your mama. But not just yet, because the evening gown competition is up next, which is why I've got my tux on, straighten out the bow tie, comb my mustache, I have no hair. So if you're watching at home, you ought to be looking pretty good too, because it's almost time to vote. Right, Ashley? Steve, I think you look really great. And also, you can. You can go vote at the Miss You app or Votee. Click vote or online at vote.missuniverse.com. Or you can also tweet your vote using hashtag Miss Universe, hashtag country. Okay, so the best thing about the evening gown competition is that each gown is super unique and super sparkly. And the contestants work closely with top international designers like Sherry Hill to make sure that their high fashion looks reflect the personal style and attitude that they want to convey to the judges. Let's get to it. This is the evening gown competition, everybody.
Here are our first three from our final nine, lighting up the stage. Here is... USA. USA is an advocate for soldiers suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Thailand. This gown was inspired by a dress once worn by the Queen of Thailand. France. France's gown took nearly five months to make. Please welcome the next trio. Three more outstanding women dressed to the nine. Mexico. Mexico competed in seven different pageants prior to arriving here in Manila. Kenya. Kenya is hoping to become the eighth winner in history to compete in a red gown. Colombia. Colombia loves this evening gown, which was created by a popular designer from her country. Now, let's hear it for our last three. This round is all about class. Canada. Canada co-founded an apparel company that provides clean water in those in need. Haiti. Haiti had trouble deciding between three gowns for tonight. I think she made a great choice. Philippines. Philippines is a model, so this is her favorite part of the competition because it feels like a fashion show. All nine finalists look incredible, so that means more tough choices for our judges here in Manila and for you judges at home. And when we come back, I'm not going to leave you all hanging. I'm announcing all six finalists when Miss Universe returns live on Fox. I'm hanging out here in the Chi Lounge, and during the break, we tabulated the results from all of you home judges worldwide. Did your favorite make the cut? These are the contestants that you at home advanced to the final six. Now let's see if the judges here in Manila agree with your selections. Okay, judges, millions of people are watching, and some of those millions think that you've made some great decisions. Other millions, well, I can't say on TV what they thinking. Uh, but welcome to my world. So let me ask Layla, uh, we're through two rounds of competition. Which contestants has really jumped out for you as front runners? Steve, I'm going to be honest with you. This is just getting tougher. for. Uh, at the swim su uh, swimsuit competition, a lot of girls got my attention. But at the evening gown competition, some other girls got my attention. So I'll have to wait for the final question to see who is the most complete girl. Well. Uh, Sushmita, as a former uh, winner of this competition, what are you looking for from these six women in, in, in the question round? Hi, Steve. I have to reciprocate this love. Mahal Kita, Philippines. <laughs> uh, 
To be perfectly honest with you, this is that moment where a Miss Universe is created. She comes onto this platform and gives an answer that connects larger consciousness, gives people an opportunity to get to, well, have the attributes of candor, confidence, and a well-spoken Miss Universe. Tonight, I see at least six of them right there. Thank you so much. Thank you, judges. Uh, these nine incredible women have all risen above the competition, but only six of them are about to make the cut. I have the results on another card in my hand. God, please, come on, God. All right. The first to enter the top six is... France! I want to successfully represent my country, France, and everyone in the world throughout this competition and as Miss Universe. France. Still in the running is Kenya. What should make you complete as a woman is to be confident in knowing that you can achieve anything. Kenya locking down the third spot is Colombia. I believe young people need a positive role model they can identify with. I believe a woman can be that role model. Colombia. Also heading to the next round is... Philippines. It is really a big thing for them to know that their fellow Filipino is actually achieving her goals. Philippines, only two spots left. Next to enter the top six is Thailand. Do good things without needing to tell anyone. Because eventually, if you do good, good things will come back to you. Thailand. Four women, but only one spot left. Still in the competition is Haiti. You're a strong, resilient woman. No matter what happens to us, we are always ready to get back on our two feet and to go on with life and make the most out of it. Haiti, say hello to your six finalists. Round after round, these extraordinary women have lit up this stage. By the end of the night, one of them will don the crown. The competition began over two weeks ago with 86 contestants, and now we've narrowed it down to the top six. They're about to face their most difficult challenge yet, the question round, which is coming up next when Miss Universe continues. When I won The Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria 2015, the previous winners had been fair-skinned oh, for like okay. a long while. And then I happened to be dark-skinned. People still made silly comments on social media, yeah. Facebook, Instagram. And the annoying thing is that these people do not know you. It's like we're never good enough. You can't be short, you can't be tall, yeah. you can't be too you slim, can you can't have big everybody. hips, you, you can't have big breasts. We are never perfect, but yeah. I don't want to be perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If people tell me that I'm fat, that they don't like my skin color because I'm not white, I'm not black, I can see in the mirror to myself and I like me. 
There's so much more to each person here, you know. Everybody yeah. that I've met has so many achievements and it's incredible to see all these women in one place. Yeah. You see women with so many different backgrounds coming in all shades, sizes, religions, personalities, and you're just able to be so inspired by the diversity of the world. It's Just beautiful. Me. Welcome back to Miss Universe live from the Philippines. Okay, this is probably the most nerve wracking part of the competition, the question round. And as a global ambassador making public appearances worldwide, the Miss Universe must have the ability to think fast on her feet. These answers will determine who makes it into the final three. Now the questions are coming from readers of The Skim. It's an e-newsletter read by millions of women every day, including yours truly. And we ask their Skim ambassadors, their most influential readers, to make sure the questions are challenging and relevant to the world right now. Let the drama begin. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, for you judges watching from home, get ready to vote. It's never been more important than it is right now. So contestants, once I read the question, you will have only 30 seconds to deliver a clear and concise answer. When your time is up, you will hear this sound. <laughs> Colombia, France, Thailand, and Haiti will be using an interpreter. During, during the commercial break, we randomly picked an order. Philippines is first. Here we go. Join me at center stage. Philippines. All right. What is the most significant change you've seen in the world in the last 10 years? Ano ang pinakamakabuluhang naganap na pangyayaring nakita mo sa mundo sa loob ng sampung taon? In the last 10 years of being here in the world is that I saw all the people bringing in one event like this in Miss Universe. And it's something big to us that we are one. As one nation, we are all together. Thank you. Thank you, Philippines. Kenya, you're up. Now, arguably, no United States president has had a more active first 10 days in office. What are you most excited about and what most concerns you when it comes to the presidency of Donald Trump? Politics <laughs> uh, is, okay, let me just start again. <laughs> Donald Trump, having been elected as the president of the United States, may not have been the choice of many people living in the United States because, because of the divided support system for the outgoing president, Barack Obama, who was supporting a, an upcoming woman president who was supposed to be a woman president, Hillary Clinton. So, so many people opposed his position, but I feel that once he took up his position, he was able to unify the entire nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenya. Thailand, it's time. Name or current or past world leader whom you admire and why? Yok to yang, Pudam, Radab Lo, Nay Adid, Ru, Bachaban, Tikun, Chum Chum Chin Top, Ru Kao Rop, Le Tamai. Mabuhai, Philippines. Some lap. Konan Kaku, Nay Luang Kong, this Anka. For, for me, that would be the king of Thailand. His Majesty has been working tirelessly on behalf of the Thai people ever since I was born. 
ไม่เคยบ่นแม้แต่น้อยและท่านก็เปรียบเสมือนพ่อของทุกคนในประเทศไทยค่ะ For all the Thai people, His Majesty has been like a father to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thailand. France, step right up. Given today's worldwide refugee crisis, do countries have an obligation to accept refugees? Or do they have a right to close their borders? Durant la crise des réfugiés dans le monde entier, est-ce que les pays sont obligés à accepter les réfugiés ou ils ont le droit à fermer leurs frontières? Les pays peuvent avoir le choix de fermer ou d'ouvrir leurs frontières. So the country should have the right to open or close their borders. Uh, dans l'Europe, nos frontières sont ouvertes parce que nous souhaitons avoir le plus d'exportation, le plus de mondialisation possible. Et en France, pour le moment, nos frontières sont ouvertes. Mais si un jour nous décidons de pouvoir les fermer, je pense que c'est un droit que nous avons. So, yes, in, in, throughout the world, people can choose to have the borders open or closed. In Europe, we have open borders. In France, we have we want to have the most globalization that we can. We want to have the biggest exchange of people that we can. And maybe someday that will change, but now we have open borders. Je pense que avoir des frontières ouvertes peut nous permettre de parcourir le monde et de découvrir un peu plus sur nos voisins. C'est so, having open borders allows us to travel more through the world and to find out more about what's out there in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, France. Haiti, please join me over here. On January 21st, an estimated 4.8 million people marched worldwide for human rights, women's rights, and other issues. If you were able to participate, what would you have been marching for? Hello, everybody. One of my, one of the women I admire in the world is Eleanor Roosevelt because she fought so much for human rights and I feel like that's what we need in the world. We are just one, a hundred thousand years ago, six species of human lived in the world. Now we are just one and we all need each other and we need to respect each other. Thank you, Haiti. Colombia, you're up. Why do you believe that violence is so prevalent in today's society and what can we do about it? ¿Por qué cree usted que la violencia es tan prevalente en la sociedad del día de hoy? ¿Y qué podemos hacer para evitarlo? Muy buenas noches. Good evening. Pongo de referencia a un país que viene de violencia. Well, I come from a country that does have violence and this is my reference point. Y así haya un presidente que no se lleva con otro, trabajamos unidos para conseguirla. And although there are presidents who don't get along with others, we work together to be able to unite. Campañas, respeto, Camp inclusión. Campaigns, respect and inclusivity. Para poder tener una transformación social que eduque a nuestros niños. To be able to have a social transformation that will educate our children. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colombia. After the break, we'll be back and find out who earns the title. This is Miss Universe live on Fox. I'm here with the final six contestants. They've all displayed remarkable grace under pressure but only three are about to move forward. Brace yourselves. The first contestant with a chance to become the next Miss Universe is... Columbia! The next woman 
still in the competition for the crown is France. Only one spot left. The last contestant in the final three is Haiti. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your three finalists. From 86 to our final three, this night has been unbelievable. And soon, one of you will be the next Miss Universe. The final word is coming up next. And don't forget to check Facebook.com slash Miss Universe for exclusive Facebook Live extras. This is Miss Universe, live on Fox. Remember 2007? Smartphones? OMG. 10 years later, nothing's really changed. It's time to snap out of it. Hello, Moto. Snap on a JBL speaker. Put a 70 inch screen on a wall. Get a 10 times optical zoom. Get excited, world. Hello, Moto. Moto is here. The Moto Z with Moto Mods. Get 50% off a Moto Z droid. Velveeta sandwich breakfast biscuits are for everyone, like the hottest guy at the office. Or the second hottest. It's a small office. Made with a peanut butter or dark chocolate cream flavored filling. Try new Velveeta sandwich breakfast biscuits. Can I give it to you straight? That airline credit card you have, it could be better. It's time to shake things up. With the Capital One Venture Card, you get double miles on everything you buy, not just airline purchases. Seriously. Think of all the things you buy. Great. Is this why you asked me to coffee? Well, yeah, but also to catch up. <laughs> What's in your wallet? Everywhere I go, I've got it covered. New Dream Cushion Liquid Foundation from Maybelline, New York. Liquid Foundation reinvented. Complete luminous coverage and a perfect dose cushion. For fresh face perfection, you'll love. Hit refresh with just a tap. Maybelline's new Dream Cushion. Liquid foundation in a compact. Complete coverage for fresh face perfection. Make it fresh. Make it happen. Maybelline New York. If you could see your cough, you'd see all the sickness you're spreading. Robitussin CF Max Severe soothes and delivers powerful relief of cough, sore throat, stuffy nose, and fever. Robitussin CF Max Severe, because it's never just a cough. Ziploc presents Cafeteria Chaos. School lunch can be difficult. One little struggle can lead to one monumental mishap. Not with Ziploc Easy Open Tabs, because life needs Ziploc. S.C. Johnson. They're beautiful. They're talented. Hi, Wave. And March 9th on Fox. I haven't really done anything like this. Oh my god, you're Louie. They're screwed. Eyelashes and the jungle's not mixed. As survival experts try to help them win a half a million dollars. I'm leaving. Quit them. It's the competition that makes beauty a beast. I'm so glad I'm just the host of this show. Kicking and Screaming premieres Thursday, March 9th on Fox. Welcome back to Miss Universe, everybody, live in the Philippines. 
We're down to just three finalists, and this is the last chance for each one of these ladies to express themselves before we award the title. Now, this is your final word. I'm going to ask each of you the exact same question. You've got 30 seconds. If you go over the time, you will hear this sound. Each of you will be wearing soundproof headphones so that you don't hear your competitors' answers. Now, all of our finalists will be using an interpreter. This is it. It's time for your final word. France and Haiti, headphones on. Colombia, get ready. All right. Here is your question. Name something over the course of your life that you failed at and tell us what you learned from that experience. Dime algo en lo que hayas fallado en la vida y qué aprendiste de esta experiencia. Creo que muchas veces uno falla por todo. I think that many times one makes, makes mistakes for many things. En el momento de no aceptar a alguien por su diferencia. During moments when you may not accept someone due to their differences. No aceptarla por su preferencia sexual. To not accept them due to their sexual preferences. No ser capaz de aceptar su error. And to not be capable of accepting their error. Creo que cualquiera de estas experiencias le da la oportunidad a uno. I think any of those experience, any of those experience gives you the opportunity de tener fortaleza en valores y principios. To have strength and value and principles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colombia. Please remove Francis' headphones. Right. Here is your question. Name something over the course of your life that you failed at and tell us what you learned from that experience. Raconte-nous d'une fois au cours de ta vie quand tu as échoué et qu'est-ce que tu as appris de cette expérience. J'ai échoué plusieurs fois dans ma vie. I failed several times in my life. J'ai cru échouer pendant ma première année de médecine parce qu'au départ je n'étais pas sur la liste. So I thought that I failed the first time that I went out on a casting because my name wasn't on the list. Et l'après-midi même, j'ai été m'acheter un nouveau livre de médecine. And the very next day, I found that I was in a new book. Je pense que quand on échoue, il faut continuer, il faut se relever. Et je pense qu'on est toutes capables de le faire. Si ce soir, je ne gagne pas, c'est pas pour autant que demain, je n'aurai pas le sourire parce que je fais partie des trois finalistes. So I think that when you fail, you have to be elevated and you have to try again and keep going. If tonight, I'm not one of the winners, I will still have been the, had the great honor of bidding one of the three finalists. J'ai beaucoup appris quand j'ai cru échouer et heureusement pour moi finalement j'ai eu ma première année de médecine. So I think that I have failed before, but for, 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 this, for me this is the great first opportunity. Thank you, France. Please remove Haiti's headphones. Haiti, here's your question. Name something over the course of your life that you failed at and tell us what you learned from that experience. Can you repeat the question? Name something over the course of your life that you failed at and tell us what you learned from that experience. About seven years ago, I survived the earthquake. I feel I was failing myself because I was not living my dreams. I was living day by day in that earthquake. It was a bad event, but I chose to be a very positive person and learn a great lesson from it because if I am here today, it's because I am living my dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Hayden. Well, 
That was a, that was a tough final question. When we come back, years of preparation and weeks of competition will lead to one shining moment. But first, the final look where our contestants will walk the stage accompanied by the legendary Boys to Men. One more chance to vote for your favorite contestants when Miss Universe continues live on Fox. We're back. And we're down to our final contenders for the title of Miss Universe. And you at home are about to have your final chance to pick your favorite. Remember, there are four simple ways to vote. Just use the Miss You or Vody apps and go to votemissuniverse.com. Or you can always go to Twitter and use the hashtag Miss Universe, hashtag country. We are down to three finalists and their journey is coming to an end one of these incredible women will become the next Miss Universe. We've got one last chance to impress the judges here in the final look. And accompanying the contestants, please welcome four-time Grammy winning icons, currently rocking in residency in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, boys to men. Somebody tell me how to get things back the way they used to be. Oh, God, give me the reason. I'm down on mending knees. Yeah. Oh. Darling, I, I, I can't explain. Where did we lose our way? That is driving me insane And I know I just need one more chance To prove my love to you And if you come back to me Everybody sing the song, everybody, come on. Can somebody tell me how to 
for your final three and boys to men. All three finalists just came out strong with their final look. We're adding up the judges' scores now. And when we come back, we'll discover which contestant has earned the title. This is the 65th Miss Universe live on Fox. Welcome back, everybody. Around this time last year, Pia Workspot became the 64th Miss Universe. She has spent the last 12 months representing everything the Miss Universe organization stands for with pride and grace. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you love her. From the Philippines, your own Miss Universe, Miss Pia Workspot. <laughs> Being Miss Universe has offered me tremendous opportunities to draw attention to the issues close to my heart, such as bullying and HIV and AIDS awareness. On top of my thank you list is my mother. I am the woman I am because of the woman you are. To my sister Sarah, you are my rock. Paula, Esther, Sean, and the rest of the MEO team, you are family to me. To my Miss Universe sisters, I'll see you again soon. To the worldwide pianatics, salamat. To the next Miss Universe, Fasten your seatbelt. At the end of your reign, you will have grown in confidence, maturity, and faith. For me, the title was a dream come true, but the work continues. Kababayan, maraming salamat po. Mahal ko kayo. Thank you for everything. Pia, thank you so much. It has been quite a run. Thank you so much. And now, it's time to crown another winner. 86 women took the stage tonight, and now we're down to three, all deserving, all ready to take on the title. It's time to reveal which one of them will be Miss Universe. Tal Goldhammer from the accounting firm of Ernst & Young has tallied the votes. Listen to me, sir. This got to be right, okay? <laughs> Let's not let this happen again. You will not leave the Philippines. Well, Thank you. The judges have spoken. This is the moment 
where weeks, months, and years of hard work finally pays off. The second runner-up for Miss Universe is... Congratulations. There are two women left, France and Haiti. Please join me over here. One of you is about to become our new Miss Universe. If for any reason the winner is unable to fulfill her duties, the first runner-up will take her place. Good luck to both of you. Thank you so much, Pia. A year late, but thank you. Thank you, God. Here we go. The new Miss Universe is... walk as Miss Universe. A new Miss Universe has been crowned thanks to our judges, the contestants, and everybody watching. I'm Ashley Graham, good night or good morning from Manila. And I'm Steve Harvey, and I got it right. Good night, everybody.